Happy Saturday, everyone. This is Jen. We are on for our weekend wild card today. You know, I was looking back last weekend, we did uh, hips, we did hamstrings, we did twists. So um, some larger muscle groups, some bigger movements. Um, I thought we'd go kind of the other direction today and do some of the sometimes overlooked areas, right? Ankles, wrists, fingers even. So some of these overlooked areas uh, that are stabilizers that help us not only through our normal like walking, everyday business, but also I know a lot of you are climbers. Hey, Molly. Um, so really trusting feet, trusting your ankles to work for you, trusting that your wrists are strong, that your fingers are strong. Uh, so just taking it in the opposite direction and moving into these smaller areas and seeing what we can do with them. And then maybe seeing what is a little bit challenging for us uh, in those areas too. I think sometimes when we focus on the larger uh, muscle groups, right, you know, legs, hips, hamstrings, this type of stuff, um, that's very obvious. And of course you want those to be strong and, and flexible and all those wonderful things. Uh, but if we could also get a little bit stronger, hey Grace, uh, you know, wrists, ankles, toes, fingers, that whole business, I think oftentimes that helps bring everything together. And we don't think about that that often. So anyway, that is our focus today. If you're on hardwood, I always forget how hard hardwood is. So, um, definitely have like a towel or um, a pillow or anything else that you want to use underneath your knees um, as we move forward. So let's go ahead and get going then. Okay, I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use a towel. I'm just going to have it ready just in case. Okay, so let's start just with kneeling position. Normal kneeling position, so your legs, your knees glued tight. And then just hang out right here. Relax your arms down by your side. Take a full deep inhale, lengthen out through the crown of your head. Exhale, relax your shoulders down away from your ears. Do that again, inhale. Actually, let's lift up our shoulders all the way up high towards our ears. And exhale, drop them way low. Good. And start to circle out your wrists here. Let's just go outward. Good. And these can be as slow and as or as fast as you prefer. And let's go the other direction. Good. From here, show me the top of your left hand. Press grab using the help of your right. Gently pull your fingers back to face you. Nice. And then change it up so that you're saying stop, yeah? And then take your fingers and pull them back toward you as well. All this stuff feels like it just takes a lot more time and patience. So it's a wonderful thing to do on the weekend too. Something that requires a little bit more patience, a little bit sort of a calmer undertone, right? And then gently release. We'll take our thumb as well and pull it back. And for me, actually, um, I've mentioned this before. I have a little bit of arthritis going on right here in my palm area. So this feels super, super nice to me. Okay, let's gently release. And again, show me the top of your right hand. Use your left hand to gently pull back. And with these, because it feels kind of um, benign, it's easy to kind of overdo as well. So go to a place where you feel something, but not to the point where you're like hurting or anything, right? And your arm can be straight, it can be slightly bent. However it feels natural for you is perfect. Good. And let's gently release. Do the whole stop thing and then pull your four fingers back toward you and really get that stretch all through your form, especially if you've been starting to climb, this ought to feel um, pretty good. All right, so we'll just do the same thing. Pull back your right thumb, right? Pull back your right thumb. 
whether or not you have like that arthritis -y feeling, you should feel a nice little stretch right through kind of the butt of your palm. I feel it on this side, even though I know this side is actually quite healthy relative to my left. Good, and then let's gently release. We'll start to put a little bit of pressure on our wrists. So give them a couple of shakes, a couple of circles. All right, and then from here, ball up your fingers into a very tight fist on each side. And we'll just press our knuckles in towards each other. Press them down toward the floor, tops of your hands on the floor. Still you have that very firm, tight grip. And start to gently, gently, gently lengthen out through your arms. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. So as this feels a little bit Mm, not so great sometimes on our forearms. It's easy to start to get that tension to rise up into your shoulders. Uh, so try to relax that down. It's quite common. Just relax your shoulders. And best you can keep it active. So maybe you start to straighten out these arms just a little bit more. Good release. And then shake that loose again. I forgot one of my favorite ones. Take the backs of your hands or the tops of your hands toward each other. Let's bring this right wrist on top of our left. Interlace your fingers. And we'll swoop it in and swoop it out. Now any amount, right? Trying to keep your palms fairly close with each other. And then same thing, your ears might, uh, your shoulders, I'm sorry, might hike up to your ears. Try just gently relax. Again, you might feel a little bit of stretch. To, uh, and this side should be your right uh, butt of your palm again. And let's gently undo. So you're back in that original position. We'll switch it so your left uh, wrist is on top of your right. Interlace your fingers. Especially if you don't have a ton of access, um, it might look like this, right? You might be here, right? You might be a little bit farther here. And then maybe you have a little bit more access. And let me tell you, it looks like I have a lot of access today, but there are days when uh, my arms do not want to do this. So uh, not to worry if you're in that situation right now. Um, every single day is a little bit different. And little by little as you work it and give your body some time, it ought to feel a little bit better. I know one of the things that I'm working on is um, maintaining that shoulder flexibility um, that I have when I'm not climbing, right? Being able to scratch my back. Um, I know that sometimes our muscles start to get really, really big in our back area and that shoulder flexibility tends to start to get lost. Um, so I'm just trying, uh, you know, even as I, you know, work hard at the climbing situation that I don't lose all that flexibility that I gained uh, when we took that big break um, for those couple months. All right, let's gently undo. Uh, shake it loose real quick. And give me some flicks, actually, also. Just flicks of your fingers, like you have water on your fingertips. You're just gonna flick out to the side. And something I personally like to do also is um, just these kind of, I don't know, throws of my hands a little bit. And I know when I'm on the wall at least, I like to do even larger ones that get my entire arm involved, but you kind of feel out what feels nicer to you. I do this quite a bit, but um, I have to admit I'm the only one I see who does this. <laughs> These very large throws of my arms to shake out. So really do what feels a little bit better for you. Okay, we're gonna apply some weight on our wrist again. Okay, let's find that tabletop. So we're starting with normal, normal tabletop, hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Uh, and let's flip though, so our fingers now start to face ourselves. So it might be the case that you need to walk uh, your fingers in a little bit. Soft part of your elbow faces out. And then just check the stack of your shoulders over your wrists once again. And it might be the case that your arms are just slightly bent. You do not have to like aggressively straighten them out. I would say though, relax your shoulders away from your ears just the same. This next thing might require a little bit of flexibility. So uh, not to worry if uh, you're just kind of warming up, take it little by little. So if you have access today, I want you to bring your left foot flat onto the floor. It could be anywhere. So mine's a little bit out to this side. 
um, and then start to crawl, just heel toe your foot over your left fingers. So I'm literally now stepping my toes, my foot on top of my fingers. And the thing I like a lot about this, I don't do it often because it doesn't feel good. <laughs> But um, it feels good to actually straighten out your fingers. It's one of those like uh, bad good feels, right? Where you're like, oh, it's so good for me, but I don't like going through the process of it all. And um, this is definitely one of those things for me. Um, but I guess the reason I still do it is because I know that I, I need it, right? So uh, with me, for instance, arms straightening out doesn't feel quite so bad. I really try to straighten out my fingers all the time. It like does not feel necessarily that great and I know I need it more because of that. So feel free then to kind of continue to massage uh, by pressing your foot over your hand in any which way, right? So getting a couple of fingers at the same time, and kind of moving it about. Or if you know that one finger is particularly problematic, for me on my left hand, it's my left middle finger um, that makes a nice little crunchy, crunchy sound when I bend it. Um, sometimes I like to just hold it in place also, right? So this is uh, your decision, what feels better, and this might uh, not be exactly what you feel on the other side. So just be flexible with it. And uh, we tend to focus on our forefingers, the longer digits, right? But our thumb, uh, you can probably see my right thumb, it's like bent quite a bit. Um, I happen to have a fairly long thumb, both sides. Uh, if you can also just press down on that a little bit, just so um, you don't lose the sensation of what it feels like to have a, a completely long, strained out thumb too. All right, we'll hang out here for just a little bit longer. Uh, you know when I said I don't do this often, I feel like the times that I do though, I'm just like, oh gosh, I could really hang out here um, forever. It feels so good. So it's one of those like good, bad feels, but also that when I'm there, I'm just like, oh man, I could really, really just hang out. Um, and I know it's good for me and all those wonderful things. All right, one more breath though. We cannot hang out here for forever. All right, and let's gently, gently, however you'd like to slide your left knee back into place, do it. Um, and feel free to uh, lift yourself up and just give yourself a quick shake. Sometimes after all that straightening of my fingers, it's quite aggressive because my fingers don't like to do that. So I just do another quick shake. Okay, we'll go into the other side. So however you like to get there, I'm gonna go through just normal tabletop and I'm gonna flip my fingers once again. So fingers face you. and. For some reason, I like to just bring them in a little bit closer. All right, so shoulders stack over your wrists again. Um, and then let's take this right foot forward. You know where we're going at this point, so it doesn't need to be super far out to this side. It's just more of an access situation. And then you can heel toe your way in as you see fit. And we're just taking some time literally to press over. I do like doing this uh, more of on a, a weekend uh, style class just because kind of mentally we're more willing also to spend some time. I think sometimes in the weekday it's not, or on a weekday it's not that we uh, are uh, unwilling to do this. It's more like everything else that's going on in our lives, whether it's work or school or uh, just like errands. I feel like it speeds us up on a tempo that feels like even our workouts need to be like boom, 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 moving fast, um, building strength and all this stuff. So it's really nice to kind of follow the pace of a weekend pace of just kind of slowing things down a little bit. I think like our minds are more willing to do it as well. So we actually have more patience uh, for ourselves and our bodies, uh, making all of this uh, overall a little bit more effective even, right? Because our bodies, our minds are, are more willing, uh, are more patient uh, on a weekend tempo. So again, feel free to walk your foot over your fingers any which way that feels nice. And this could be a continuous like kind of walk over your fingers, or you might find that you just wanna stay put. 
And it's really weird because like, again, I'm right dominant. So I would think that um, if I had issues in my fingers, it would be more on my right hand side. But somehow my right fingers feel quite a bit better than my left fingers. And perhaps it is the case that my right arm, because it is stronger, is able to just um, move more efficiently. Whereas my left arm, maybe it's a little bit weaker. So I feel like I have to grip a little bit um, in a more tense fashion. So it could be that too. A whole bunch of speculation as we make observations about our bodies, right? Um, and a lot of experimentation too, just to see what works um, and what is effective, right? Which could be totally different even on a body to body basis. Okay, we'll hang out for just one more breath here. If somebody caught you in this position, it would just look like super random, right? <laughs> All right, let's walk this foot off of our fingers. Um, and gently return onto your knees. Um, and if you can still manage it, let's just hinge back just a hair, right? Just so you can feel just a little bit more of that tension in your wrist. One more breath in. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. And one more breath out. Good. Gently release yourself back into your kneeling position. And again, I like to do a couple of throws. Maybe you wanna do a couple of uh, wrist circles just to get the blood flowing again. Good. And like I said, we went from like a really sort of a large uh, body part and grouping uh, last weekend to the other end of the spectrum, which is everything that's like more micro stuff that we potentially overlook uh, as we are focused on like hamstring flexibility or quad strength or whatever it is. So um, if we think we don't have patience for like the large muscle groups, for the smaller ones, we don't even think about it half the time. Isn't that right? Okay, so. From here, once you're finished with your circles, your shakes, take yourself into just a tucked position. Um, so your feet are still close, your legs are still close, and then let your weight just sit back so your hips are on top of your heels. And I'll just scoot a little bit to the side. Uh, what I want you to do is spread your 10 toes out wide. So you may have heard me call this toe breaking at some point in time. Um, it's true. In the beginning, we're like, oh, this feels great. What are you talking about toe breaking? Uh, but once we hang out here a little bit longer, you definitely feel uh, something. <laughs> For me, I like to do a quick check of my pinky toe, which kind of is, goes rogue uh, oftentimes. So I like to just lift it up. You probably can't see, but I like to lift up that pinky toe and set it back down so it's not like in that weird like um, crunched position. So I just like to lift it and then lower it back down. And the same thing, I'm gonna do it on the other side. It's generally the case that the other toes are more just like there and they're, and they're already propped in that position. And we'll hang out here. Notice uh, just your posture, right? So um, when it comes to applying weight, right, hips on heels, uh, it might feel okay and manageable for your first few seconds. And then as we spend a longer time in this toe breaking position, you might find yourself gently, gently hinging forward um, in an effort to reduce that weight. Um, and of course, that's totally fine at any point in time. You do not want to be in this position. Get out of it. It's great. No problem. Uh, but just to notice what your upper body is doing, right? So this feels like my spine is straight, which it is, but we really want to find this upright position so shoulders are stacked over your wrists or hips, sorry. Um, and then find that length. Uh, sort of take like a physical picture, physical picture, a feeling picture of what this feels like. So you get an understanding of where your shoulders are over your hips and how that feels. So you can come back to it and at least that you know when this situation is happening. Okay, we'll be here for one more breath, in through your nose, out through your nose, and we'll just do one more thing, okay? Use your hands against the floor, you will hinge forward, and then just send your weight back, and this should actually feel quite a bit nicer now that you're off of your toes um, in that aggressive, aggressive fashion. And again, we'll check in with our spine. As you see, my spine is straight, but I'm definitely hinged. 
What can I do to upright my spine? I want us to get that feeling. So think of angling your knees down towards the floor a little bit and then upright your spine. Naturally, by angling your knees down, you ought to find a little bit of length, right? So no longer am I hinged in this acute angle. It's now more of a right angle, right? Shoulders over hips. We'll be here for just one more breath, so not much longer. Notice if your spine is super arching out uh, to find balance. I want you to pull your navel in tight, find length, yes. And then gently release. We're just bringing hands down to the floor, knees down to the floor, and then uh, untuck your toes. All right, from here, let's do the tops of our feet, a little bit of stretching there. I'm gonna actually stay in this position. Okay, pick your left knee up off of the floor. Immediately when I pick my left knee up off of the floor, I feel my weight kind of hang, like shift to the outer, like the side of my left foot as opposed to right on the top. So if you can manage to kind of adjust your foot, maybe you need to open up your feet a little bit to get more uh, weight on the top of your foot. Try to feel that. And find a gentle lean back so you really do get that pressure on the top of your foot. If you have access to it, maybe you grab underneath your uh, left knee towards your shin and give yourself just a gentle, gentle nudge upwards. Good, and then let's gently undo. It's very, very normal for your toes want to come to come in and your heel to go out so your foot ends up sickled. Let's try to avoid that. So again, make your adjustments as you go along. As you pick up your right knee, just feel if it's sort of, sort of starting to go up towards these, this outer edge area, we really want it on the top, right? So make your adjustments as you need. If your toes feel like they're coming inward toward your center line as opposed to staying back behind you, uh, totally make those adjustments. And if you have access to it, can you lean back a little bit, grab underneath your right knee. Your arms might be straight if this is your max. If you can afford to do so, you might play around with bending your arms a little bit. This will help pick up your knee a little bit more if you have access. Good, top of your foot, getting some love. And gently release. So we're gonna continue on with that sensation. So we just did the right leg. We're gonna bring this right foot forward. I'm gonna switch my angle real quick. All right, so we're gonna practice just more on this left ankle. Lean your body weight over to your left a little bit. You can even drop your left hand down. And then step your right foot. Actually, let's go right toes in line with your left knee. And kind of hang out there. All right, so feel it out, uh, your hip on your heel, and then your top of foot flat against the floor. We're gonna keep this distance so it's pretty darn narrow, right? Your left knee in line with your right toes. You can use your hands to lift yourself up or think about tightening up your core, shift your body weight forward a little bit, and lift yourself up from there. And we're only gonna go halfway, just for the tr uh, check. This is what sickle looks like. So your toes are coming in, heels going out. We do not want this. So find it such that you're fairly flat. Your both sets of toes are in that same direction. Good, and then gently lower yourself back down. This will either feel okay or completely terrible to you. So uh, it is totally normal and take your time with it. If it really does not feel good, have a prop, a water bottle, whatever it is, to use that, push against the floor, and come up, all right? And we're only going up halfway. And then gently lower back down. Exercise that control up and down, up and down. We'll just do two more times. So again, you might push off the floor, you might bring your hands over something, or your hands are in prayer, shift, and then notice the sickling of your foot, that potential, don't let it happen. You're still on the top of your foot, very strong. Good, and then gently lower down. And there is absolutely, of course, ton of weight on this right leg as well, so you're definitely getting some work there. Uh, we'll do one more time. Shift your body weight forward and make this as seamless as possible. Excellent. And gently lower yourself down. 
Very good. All right, stay here. Let's extend this right leg forward. Find that place. Flex your right foot back toward your face. Inhale, lift your chest up nice and tall and find your long spine again. For me, it's easy to start to arch or I do weird things with my spine. So I gotta pull my navel in and find that length. Hard flex of your right foot. I'm gonna change my angles so you can see my foot. And then give me a hard point of your toes, foot flat. Or best you can, I should say. Uh, flex your foot back toward your face, the hard flex. And go for that point. Two more times. Hard flex, flex. Hard point, point. Get your toes, try, touch the floor. One more time, hard flex. Yup. And hard point, go point. Last time, flex, and we'll go out to the right, to the left. So, keeping your leg as long and straight as possible. Just that little right and left action. Good, and we'll hang out here for four, for three, for two, for one. Good, very nice. Lean again over to your left hand side, swing this right leg back into your kneeling position. At this point in time, your left leg is like, oh my gosh, we need to move a little bit. So I totally hear you. We will do that now. So let's switch our sides. You're still in that kneeling position. Lean a little bit over to your right. You might even touch down to the floor to get your left foot out from underneath you. We want these left toes not way out here, but super actually close uh, so that your left toes and your right knee uh, line up. All right, check in with your right foot. Top of foot flat against the floor. You already know the inclination will be to sickle with your toes coming in, your heel going out. So mentally sort of prepare and preemptively work against that sickle situation. All right, so you decide, you check. First couple are diagnostic, see if you need the floor. Maybe you need a prop. Maybe your hands are in the prayer position. Let's gently hinge, we're not going all the way up. So really take your time. Allow that pressure to be there on the top of your right foot. And then just as mindfully, lower yourself down. Ideally, there's not much change in the top of your right foot situation, right? There's not this wiggling back and forth, right? So again, hinge forward, make it as seamless as possible. Put pressure, of course, on your left leg to help get yourself up about that halfway point. And gently lower yourself down. Nice. You have two more now. And I already feel for some reason this ankle is much more accessible than the other one. Shift your body weight forward. Even though the other one feels like okay, this one's like even more okay. It feels like very like willing to work with me. And lower back down. And I've really never made that observation before. So that's kind of fun, right? Every single day you uh, make more notes about what your body is doing, all that stuff. Last time, shift your body weight forward. The kind of neat thing about our bodies, obviously, is that we're ever evolving, ever changing. So uh, this observation that I've noted today, lower down, uh, might be totally different like a year from now, five years from now, maybe even a week from now, who knows, right? Okay, so from this place, let's again, uh, let's just straighten out this left leg. You totally touch down, do what you need to do. And we'll do that upright of our spine once again. Really find that lift. All right, top of your foot nice and flat. Hard flex of your left foot. Feel your toes come over to your shins. Hard flex. And then give me a hard point. Toes all the way down toward the floor, facing that way. Hard flex. Good, hard point. Nice job. You have two more now. Hard flex. Just see the muscle of your shin. And hard point. Last time, flex and point. Flex. Really feel that activation to the back side of your uh, left leg. Hard point. Good. And then find 
that flux, we're just doing the whole right and left uh, business here. And think as you do these right and left, that you're rotating all the way up from your inner thigh, from your hip area, yeah? For four, heart flux for three, for two, for one, good. And then stop in the center, lean over to your right hand side. Let's take this left leg and bring it back into your kneeling down position. Awesome. All right, use your hands against the floor. We'll uh, get off of these ankles. So tuck your toes in. And as you push yourself back up, open up your knees, right, left. Press your heels in close with each other. And then start to, again, upright your spine. I'm definitely hinged at the moment. Lift up tall, shoulders over hips. And let's go for a balance here, hands in the prayer position, hang out here. Good. I'm always down for being on toes because I feel like it's such a great way to practice uh, balance and also the flexibility of our feet. Hold right here. Hold for four for three, for two, for one, and then gently lower your hands down. Open up your feet a little bit wider, and I know Malasana is troubling, um, or troubling, troublesome for some people, so totally take your time with it. Um, and especially if Malasana is actually not that difficult for you, and it's easy for you to dump your hips down, which I'm totally doing right now, we need to lift up, right? So there's always a little bit of work to do, which is uh, kind of the wonderful thing about any posture it can be as uh, difficult as you make it right sort of uh, the details and everything else you can take a very basic uh, posture or one that you've done just like time and time again and add more detail add more finesse uh, add more precision right all right so from here let's again just pick up this right heel really lift it up there and i want you to press your heel well forward of your toes Hold right here for four, for three, for two. Really press, 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 and gently lower your heel down. Lift your left heel up, same deal. We're only doing this one time, and I want you to press though. When you're super close to the floor right now, you have no issue of uh, you know, falling over. If you do, you're very close to the floor. Press your heel, forward, 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 that's it. and gently lower ourselves down. Good, from here, use your hands to push against the floor. Parallel your feet as you lift your hips. And just softly bend your legs here as you slowly roll yourself up. Okay, as much as I said, no sickle, no sickle, we're gonna actually practice it, uh, putting some weight in that sickled fashion. So, let's go body weight into our left leg first. And then come to the knife edge, right? So the outer edge of your right foot. So the sole of your right foot faces your left foot. And we'll do like a squat, basically. So push your hips back and then bend both legs. You're on the outer edge of your right foot. Remember, with this, is a little bit unstable. So I want you to be kind of careful with this so that you're not like um, completely dumping over. You're fairly square, centered. Good, gently come back up. Keep the uh, side of your foot touching the floor. Let's do that again. Down, nice. Take it up again. Two more times, okay? Outer edge of your foot flat against the floor. Down. And lift yourself back up, really nice. Last time, go down. Take yourself back up. All right, we'll switch it then, the arch side. This is all very awkward. Yeah, so if you feel awkward, good, perfect. So you're going arch side in, so this is a little bit weird, right? Your knee is kind of bending in toward you. We'll do four of these as well. So you might open up your feet a little bit wider. Let's go, bend. Your right knee is totally, it's normal, it's coming in a little bit. Be careful again as you come up. Only go so deep as you feel your body can out, get yourself out of it, right? Good, and gently come back up. Two more times. 
Nice. Gently come up. Last time. And this is really, as much as I say like no sickle, no sickle, and like none of this business, um, it's good just to also have the range though, the ability to access it when we can. So flatten out your foot again, weight over to your left foot again, and we'll just take this top of your right foot, do a couple of circles all the way around. Think of your heel kind of doing the circles all the way around and the rest of your leg is kind of doing whatever your heel is telling uh, it to do. And let's reverse it, so going the other way. And you might not be going as fast as me, you might be going faster than me. Give yourself that full range. Lift up out of your waist, you're not completely dumping into your left foot. Nice. And gently release, let's do the other side. I know it's a little bit weird, so way to stay with me. Outer edge of your left foot, flat against the floor. So the sole of your foot is lifted, it's facing your right leg. Let's sit down, we just have four of these. So however like the, your leg goes is perfect. And gently come back up. We have three more times again. You're letting that weight definitely come over this left foot, right? Lift yourself up. Nice, only two more. So get yourself down. Your biggest, fullest range squat as your body sees fit. We always wanna leave enough room to get ourselves out of the situation. <laughs> Good, gently come back up. And we'll switch it so we're doing uh, the arch side, right? I exaggerated that change, but you know. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna open up my feet a little bit wider as I know this left knee is gonna cave in a little bit on me. And gently come up. Continue to pull your navel in tight, even though the focus is, or appears to be the case that uh, it's just on legs. For the most part, there is this underlying current of our core being the foundation of it all, right? So uh, lest we forget, which I do often. <sighs> gently come back up. Last time, in your fullest range, leaving enough room to get yourself out of it. Nice. And then just flatten out your foot against the floor. Transfer your body weight into your right foot. Let your heel lead the way, top of your foot on the floor. Find one direction. Keep yourself lifted so there's no dump on this right side hip. Good. And again, you're going for your widest circle of your heel and the rest of your leg is only moving uh, as a function of what your heel is basically dictating. Good. And let's reverse this. So we're bringing it all in. I was like, my circle got real weird. <laughs> so find that good circle. And the thing I like about this also is that you really get the top of your foot to kind of go heavy against the floor as well. So it's just reinforcement for the things that we did earlier on the floor. Good. All right, gently release. Shake loose your hips real quick. Um, this is gonna be a little bit weird, but stay with me, try. You're going on the outer edge of both of your feet this time, so it's like, uh, when you're standing there like awkwardly, we are totally gonna deliberately do that. Soles of your feet off of the floor, right? They're sort of facing each other. And then let's bend, see what happens. How far can you go? And you're always saving enough room to get yourself out of the situation. Yes, gently lift yourself up. Let's do three more times. Go low. Careful, careful, of course and gently lift up. If any of this rumor does not feel good to you, back out of it a little bit more, so less range, or skip it entirely, right? Really depending on what your history is, uh, you want to take good care of yourself, so if your body is rejecting this, be done with it. All right, I think that's four, but I might have only done three, so I'm just gonna do one more and gently come back up, really nice. Let's switch it then, feet flat, and we'll go the other direction. I know this is even weirder, so I want you to um, be that much more cautious then. So, coming on the arch side, coming on the arch side, I'm gonna open up my feet just a little bit wider. Be careful guys, slow, slow. Lower yourself down. 
Soles of your feet are still off of the floor. Gently come back up. Good. Three more times. Sit yourself down. Your fullest range with the ability to get yourself up. Yes, Molly. I so appreciate you, girl. She was like, I'm all, all about here, or all here for the awkwardness. Way to be awkward while I'm repeating what you just said, Molly. <laughs> yeah, so do your four, and then let's definitely just shake it loose. I think just some things that are a little bit weird, we want to, just because we don't want to do them on the regular doesn't mean that we, uh, shouldn't be able to access it in our toolbox when we need it, when we want to type of thing. So occasionally we kind of fool around with those positions, not in the sense that we'll do this on the regular, but um, just to be able to catch ourselves, like, you know, I mentioned this uh, when it was colder, uh, let's bring ourselves down to the floor. I mentioned this when it was colder out and there might be like freezing, uh, rain or freezing snow, there's like a sheet of glass on the floor, you might find yourself every once in a while just caught in this awkward situation to be able to kind of like rein it all back in and then recover is what we're going for I think with these types of things. All right, so flex your feet back toward your face real quick uh, and then point out through your toes. So we totally did this already and this is a great way also for our legs to kind of recover and reset um, back into a neutral space. Let's flex again, go flex your feet back toward your face. Notice your tall spine, sometimes tall, I end up hinging forward. Uh, so again, notice if that is the case for you. It might not be the case. And then point again your toes, point. Good, one more time here. Flex your feet, we're gonna hold this one and then take your heels in, toes out. Kind of naturally, if your feet fall apart, that's great, that's no problem. And then keep the turned out position, just find a point for me. Do it again, flex your feet. Still with that turnout. And it's really nice because it feels a lot different in your legs even as you uh, have the turned out position. Point your toes. Good, and then flex again. Last time, point your toes, point. And if your legs had um, come apart a little bit, feet apart a little bit, bring them back in a little bit closer. And let's take these arms all the way up Gentle find your hinge. And it might be the case, uh, we talked about this previously, it might be the case that your legs start to bend a little bit, uh, then maybe you maintain the length in your spine a little bit more and that could be your focus for this particular one. Open up through your chest and then see if you might be able to use your finger to help press uh, your fingers, your sorry, your toes uh, down a little bit toward the floor so you feel that nice stretch through the top of your feet. Open your chest again if that's come away from you. Good, and then gently come back up. We'll switch it so you're square now. Again, square, lift up, and then gently hinge forward again. And then maybe for this one, instead of uh, your super long spine, you bend up your legs just a hair and then press the tops of your feet down flatter against the floor. Uh, and this actually, might, you might feel a little bit weird stretching through the backside of your legs as opposed to the tops of your feet. And if you're like, hey, I actually would prefer to stretch the tops of my feet, which I'm always in support of, uh, you lengthen out your legs again and then push down from there. If you have the access, right? Lift up tall through your chest and hang out. Push, push, push. Good, and then gently come back up. All right, I'm gonna bring this music back on. I don't know what happened here. Okay, all right. So we're gonna do just a couple more things to reinforce what we just did. And let your left leg just go in front. And for this right leg, we'll pick it up. Point your toes. When you point your toes, I want you to visually, of course, want to feel the things, all that stuff, but as a visual reinforcement, I want you to really close off this. So you don't end up pointing your toes and looking like this, which I guarantee you've seen this before, right? Maybe not on you, maybe on somebody else. It's fine. I want you to think, press down, right? No space. 
right? And this, I, ha I hate to say it, part of it is, of course, I want you to have that nice ankle flexibility, but I'm not gonna lie to you, another part of it is I want you to have this beautiful pointed toe. <laughs> pure aesthetics, pure vanity. All right, hold right here. And let's go right and left a couple of times. And when you move your toes out to the left, this is the sickle that I usually do not want to see, right? That we usually do not want to access. But it's just good to feel it out. Sometimes it's almost like, um, to figure out where you want to go, you need to know what the other options are, right? And these are the other options. And I want you to feel and know what that feels like so that the moment you do feel it, you're like, oh gosh, I got to correct it and bring it back to the point. Find your point again one more time. Good, and then gently lower down, let's switch it. So your left leg up, and notice again, it's quite common to see this as people's pointed toes. Think of this as like somebody curling their toes, right? But I really wanna find this, right? This flattening out, right? So when you press also in your forward fold, your fingers into your toes, this is what I'm looking for, right? A nice flat top, none of this business. Right, because really, if you were against the floor, you'd have this huge gap, right? And it's easier said than done, especially if like just naturally you do have that gap underneath your ankles. No problem. We're just working a little bit, a little bit towards that, right? Even this, right, can be better, right? And then once I get to that better place, that can even be better, right? So there's always a little bit more we can do. Okay, so from here, let's do that sickle right and left, right? So the sickle, again, your toes, when they move out to the right, should be that feeling of the sickle. And I want you, when we're in any kneeling down position or anything like that, if you feel that, right? When you're like more on this outer edge, top side of your foot area, I want you to immediately recognize it and then bring yourself back into the top of your foot flat type of situation. All right. And then find center again, that beautiful point. And if you're pointing hard and aggressively enough, uh, you might find that your toes will cramp up on you even, right? And I love that. I definitely feel it often, and it is not the best feeling ever, but I know I'm working then, uh, and also I'm probably dehydrated, but <laughs> I'm working hard then to really achieve that point. Okay, let's release this. Very good. Uh, let's quickly actually return to our um, wrists. So, Find whatever comfortable seat is good for you. Um, and then show me again the top of your left hand. Pull back once again. And this time I want you to pull, or sorry, change the rotation. So now your fingers face out toward the right. And still give me that gentle pull back toward yourself. Good. So the good thing about these wrist stretches is that there are so many of them that you can find one that works a little bit better for you or gives you more uh, of what you're looking for that particular day. Return back to the floor, fingers facing the floor, and adjust accordingly, right, basically. Good, and then let's turn back into the stop position. Pull your four fingers back toward your face. And your arm is as bent, as little or as much um, as you see fit. And the same thing, those four fingers, we're just gonna face them down toward the floor, pull them back. And again, it's like the same, same, but maybe just like slightly different. And I think this also varies person to person. So if there's one direction, orientation, whatever it is that makes you uh, feel more, uh, go for that one. Sometimes we don't always wanna feel that much. So if you're feeling more of like a milder version, do that, right? and gently release. Uh, let's bring it back to that stop position. Take your thumb, pull. And you might even experiment with different ways of pulling back. Sometimes I just take my thumb to thumb action, take the rest of my fingers and have them just around my forearm and then pull back from there. Good. And gently release. Uh, we're doing the same thing, pull back your thumb. And I'm uh, taking my right thumb and just 
almost at the base of my left thumb, pushing in and then pulling with the rest of my fingers to come back. And when I say like wrists and fingers and like ankles and feet and everything are often overlooked, uh, I'm saying that not as like everyone else does it. No, it's like me, I overlook it. <laughs> I can't tell you the last time I did this. And so this is actually something really lovely and I am enjoying doing this. Gently release. Good, show me the top of your hand again on your right and then let's pull back. And then when you do these wrist stretches, uh, Sometimes they do feel quite deep, and then you might notice that other parts of your body become defensive, right? So uh, in my case, it's my shoulders that would oftentimes want to hike up. So that's you as well, you just notice it. And we'll just change the orientation of this so your fingers move out uh, to your left hand side and gently you're still pulling back. Good. Um, two. A stop. Pull your four fingers back. Good. And gently we'll switch it, right? So our fingers now face down, still you're palming it um, to the screen, and then pull back. Feel that nice stretch through your right forearm, that area. Good. And then gently release, let's go back to the stop. Pull back your thumb. You can experiment what works better for you, right? Uh, so especially if this feels quite tiring uh, on your left arm, like that's definitely not the intention. So if you can become more efficient with it, uh, you can also do this business, which is my thumb against thumb, and then the rest of my left finger is just against my uh, underside of my right wrist. Good. And gently let's release. Again, show me your palm. I'm just the other fingers down toward the floor instead. And it looks like this if you're going for this fingers against thumb and then thumb on top of wrist action. Yes, I was just thinking that Molly, Molly just wrote that it sounds like haunted hotel music. It's like all like weird old timey stuff with like a random beat behind it. So it's like, it's modern, but then it's also old school, like old timey ish. I don't know. <laughs> Muzak a little bit, right? And let's gently release. Um, take the tops of your hands again and then just press them in toward each other. Check in with my shoulders, right? Where my shoulders are totally hiked, drop them. Um, and then kind of push into each other. So it almost feel like your wrists are a little bit pulling apart and just do a little bit of forward back action, forward back action. Yes. And again, these are different ways of doing the same thing, right? So if you experience sort of very, very similar stretching sensation, that's exactly uh, right. Good. And then do a quick shake out, wrist, circle, whatever you need to do. We're gonna do one more that's exactly like that. So come back onto your all fours. So earlier we did normal, and then we did fingers facing us. Uh, we're gonna do fingers facing us, but the tops of your hands facing the floor. For this, it's quite aggressive for me at least because there's quite a bit of weight. So I like to bring my fingers actually not too far away from my knees. Um, and then start with your shoulders kind of over your wrists and it's only uh, as you see fit, you're leaning back, right? Allowing uh, a little bit more weight to happen over the tops of your hands. But again, however you see fit. Hold right here for four, three, two, one, and then gently release. Shake that loose. Give me some uh, wrist circles once again. And then we're gonna press onto our fingers once again, because I feel like that's one of those things that comes, uh, you do it and your body's like, ah, cool, we're, we're done with that and moving on. Um, it doesn't actually stay. So we're gonna do a press of our fingers again. 
Um, this time let's do fingers out to the side. So you're in tabletop with fingers out to the sides. Take your left foot and press it over. And again, you feel free to move or you feel free to kind of just hang out in one spot. The thing about with fingers out to the sides, you might be able to even have access just to sit down. So you don't even have to prop yourself up. This is the lazy man's finger press. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, see what you can do. Again, my thumb just like, I don't know if it's like super long or just doesn't want to stay straight. Um, best you can straighten out your fingers. And this is pretty relaxing. Like I said, if you have access just to sit on your bum, uh, I'm not really having to do much, but focus on these fingers. And I'm gonna hang out here for a little bit. Uh, let's be here for the next 30 seconds, actually, so we'll give ourselves a really good uh, chunk of time. And especially if you know that there's like one kind of problematic finger, for me it's my third finger, uh, I'm just gonna hang out here and give it some love. Good, just a little bit longer now. All right, gently, gently, let's release out of this one so you can heel toe your way out of it. And still your fingers are facing the sides. Um, so I'm just gonna step this right foot over. Good, and if you have access, maybe just scoot over and let your butt sit down onto your heel. You can move your foot. You can stay in one spot. Whatever you're looking to do. For me, again, sometimes I'm like, why is my thumb just like bent? It's just not necessary. <laughs> All right, again, we're gonna be here for 30 seconds or so, so you can choose whether you wanna stay, uh, whether you wanna transfer more weight. The thing I like about this is that really you can uh, adjust it on the whim type of thing. So it doesn't need to be uh, one of those situations where you're stuck once you put yourself there. Right, it's very flexible, you can decide um, how you wanna work it. All right, just a few more seconds here. Good. And gently walk yourself, heel toe your way out of it, return to your spot, and then just do a little bit of right left for me. It's funny, when we were on the tops of our hands and doing the top of our hand stretch, that felt like, oh my gosh, we're doing this like a lot. And now that we're doing the other direction, it feels like, oh gosh, I really crave that top of hand stretch now. For four, three, two, one, good. Uh, and then we'll do the top of hand stretch real quick. Fingers face each other. And without the full grip of our fingers, this should also give us a little bit more access to potentially straighten out our arms and give me a right left action as well. And I kind of like this right left because it focuses on one side each time that you do it. So feel free always to linger on one side if you need it a little bit more on that side and you'll know, right? Good, hang out for four, three, two, one. Good, gently release yourself out of that. And give me some circles, some shakes, whatever feels good to you. I'm actually not into the shakes right now after such a deep, deep stretch of my wrist. Just some circles feels good to me. All right. All right, let's gently release that. You're in the kneeling down position. We'll finish off with a couple of breaths here. Inhale, arms go all the way up high toward the ceiling. Exhale, push it out right, left. Feel open through your chest, long through your spine. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, arms all the way up. No gimmicks, no tricks. Exhale, simply push it out right, left. And release. Thank you so much, Ma, for being here. Um, again, I, I really do like that focus on the smaller things sometimes. Uh, 
that I just don't tend to just forget about because there are like other more pressing areas of our bodies. Uh, but I think this is really nice to do, especially once in a blue moon, you don't ever get tired of it. You don't ever feel like resentful of it. So just like a uh, little, little bits, fingers, wrists, ankles, that type of stuff. Hopefully it felt good for you. Um, and uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Maul. Good to see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a great night.